Hello and welcome to the channel. Today, for my first video, I thought I would lead you through creating a time lapse of a plant bloom opening using DaVinci Resolve. Here you can see my setup with a Christmas cactus. There are a number of choices you need to make to ensure the photos are suitable to create a time lapse video. These include choosing an appropriate lens for a depth of field, a light source that doesn't flicker, using an interval timer to take photos at regular intervals, and to decide on the resolution appropriate to your output format. If you'd like a future video on how to make these choices, drop me a like and subscribe, and then leave me a comment. Once you have your photo sequence saved in a folder, open DaVinci to create the project. I'm using the studio version here, but it will work with the free version too. So if you don't have it, just download the free version. Once you create the project, open the project settings to set up what video properties you want your output to be. The two key ones are your resolution, here I'm using Ultra HD 4K, and the frame rate you want to play back at, I am using 24 frames per second. Don't worry about how long your video will be as I will show you how that can be adjusted later. Now I need to get the photos into Vinci. Still on the edit tab, go up to the top left to import media and navigate to where you stored your photos. Select the first one, scroll to the bottom, select the last one with a shift click and click open. That will bring all the photos into DaVinci. I'd like to illustrate here a problem you can have if your photos are out of sequence. If you look at my image 001 here, the first in the list, the photo, uh, the plant is already partly open. If I move down to the middle, you can see it's actually more closed. What actually happened here was if I scroll to the bottom, my Canon camera reached 9999 and rolled over. So actually 001 is not the first in the sequence. So to get these into the timeline on in, in sequence, we need to first find the first one in the sequence, which is in this case. Seven, six, two, nine. Scroll to the bottom, shift select and drag that to the timeline. Now we need to go back up to zero, zero, one and select that one and come down to nine, zero, nine. Here, shift select and drag this to the end of the timeline right at the right hand side. Now all the photos will be on the timeline in sequence. If you were to select 001 to 999 and just drag them all to the timeline, they will appear on the timeline in, in file number order, which will actually be out of sequence for the video. Unfortunately, non-cinema cameras the metadata doesn't come into the uh, the DaVinci which means you can't reorder these from the metadata from the photos um, it, it doesn't work the next thing we need to do is if you look at the photos on the timeline here they are all individual photos you can see on the expanded timeline here I can individually select the photos in the, in the timeline when we come to make adjustments to the brightness and the sharpness, etc., we need it to affect all of them simultaneously and not just the one that's selected at this particular time. To do that, we need to create a compound clip. If we go to the beginning of the timeline here, select the first one in the sequence, go all the way to the end, shift select the last one in the sequence. Now we've selected all the items, come up to clip, Click New Compound Clip, give it a name, and 
wait a moment. And now all the photos have been combined into one video clip, which means any adjustments we make now will actually affect all of them simultaneously. The first thing I will do is slightly alter the composition. Originally to get a good depth of field I set the field of view larger than I want in the final video. So still in the edit tab let's zoom in a bit to focus on this main flower in the view. This is where shooting a photo at the right resolution will help you to have the flexibility to crop but still render sharp at your chosen video output resolution. So click the clip in the timeline then click on the inspector tab on the right and you'll see the transform menu here. The top item here is zoom. You'll see that the X and Y has a chain link between it. This means they will zoom simultaneously, which is what I want. So first, hover over the box, left click and drag until you get the zoom at the level you want. I think about that will do. Now because we've done a zoom we need to check that everything will be in the view and that that hasn't caused a problem with the video. So, and what we can see here is that it is clipping part of the flower when it's uh, part way through the video. So now if we go to the position here on the Y we can actually select and drag that until we bring that flower petal into view and I'll actually move that slightly as well that's it and again just scroll through the video to make sure that all the way through the flower stays within the frame next I want to make some color adjustments so at the bottom of the window I need to click the colour tab. This brings up the colour adjustment window. My photos were shot in JPEG so I don't need to develop them from RAW or from a log profile. The scope on the right shows that my colour balance is fairly good and there is no obvious clipping in the highlights. However to reduce the background detail which is a bit distracting I want to crush the blacks a little bit. I can do this with the shadows wheel. If I scroll here, about minus four, minus five, that's darkened the overall look. And if I scroll through to just check that, that looks okay, yes. Now, also, I want to bring down a little bit of the highlights because that will show more detail when I sharpen. So if we go to the highlights wheel again, just reduce that slightly. You can see the amount of adjustment there. Again, just scroll through to make sure everything looks okay. These sort of adjustments are always just for taste. Now I want to sharpen some of these details here around the edges of the leaves and the stamen. So click on the fusion tab at the bottom and you can see in our preview these are the details I want to show more. Click on effects and grab the unsharp mask and drag it onto the line between the input and the output nodes here. That will bring up this dialog box here. The size is the size of the the pixels, number of pixels that will be taken into account in the calculations of the edges for sharpening, and the gain is the strength of it. Normally, I would adjust the gain until I start to see some haloing. You can see we're getting haloing around the edges of the pink bit here, and back it off a little bit until that looks about right. Just tweak the size until 
that looks like that's sharpening quite well and again just back off slightly to make sure there's no haloing yeah to my taste that looks about right again this how much you will sharpen will depend very much on how you like your video to look the next thing i want to do is to shorten the or set the length of the video and particularly shorten it so if we go to the edit tab again and we go up to the settings icon and across to the speedometer icon here we can see that the video is actually three hours and 51 minutes long which is obviously too long for a video particularly for social media but also this would open very slowly in the video this video was shot over 30 hours so to actually speed it up we can't type into this box on the the time we have to do the same as we do in the other dialog boxes select with the left mouse button and drag and on the right hand side you can see the effect on the length of the time of the video so there we're at four times the speed and now the video is only 57 minutes long so if we drag this down and around about there that's one minute 30 long so 152 times fast playback so that has now shortened our video to one minute 30 and that's all the adjustments we need to do so now to deliver the video we need to go to the deliver tab and in here I'm going to first give it a title select where I want to put it the desktop will be fine but you can just browse here to where on your computer you want to put it select the video format it usually defaults to QuickTime uh, but I want to have an mp4 and I want to have it in h265 which is a smaller video file the encoder you can leave at auto but I will select NVIDIA because that's the fastest one on my particular system and the resolution I've actually got enough resolution here to actually do it at 4k the Ultra HD and the rest of it I can leave as is and then add to the render queue so click replace existing file and then render all Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and here's the result.